everybody, welcome to Dave's World. So I'm just gonna jump into this video today. You know I've been installing a K04 into this uh, Jetta and it pretty much covers any 1999 through 2005 Jetta 1.8. What it's also known as is a K04 swap. Uh, one thing I noticed while driving is, especially when the car's warm, when you hit high boost, meaning anything over 20 pounds of pressure, the car will go up to 20 pounds of pressure stay there for about a second and then drop the 15 and then go back up again. This apparently is a common issue. Uh, what it is, is the N75 valve, also known as a wastegate solenoid. Let me show you where that is real quick. That's that valve. What it's basically for is protecting the engine. Uh, so it's doing its job. The problem is uh, you're running more boost, so it thinks something is wrong. Uh, so what I decided to do is put one of these manual wastegate controllers in, so I'm going to do that today. From what I read online, uh, there's several different ways to install one of these. On this engine, just by staring at it for a little bit, I figured out a very simple way of doing it. Let me show you. It looks like I could basically just tap into the N75 valve hoses. So basically here and here I could put a T and then put this in place. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys footage of what's happening with the car now. Then what I'm gonna do is install this and adjust it and we'll see if we actually fix the problem. I'd like to see a steady 18 pounds of pressure instead of 20 and then down to 15 back up again. Uh, so I'm gonna set you guys up so you can watch. But before I play this video for everyone, don't forget to turn on your notifications so you can see some future updates on my channel whenever I post them. Thank you again, everybody. Hopefully you enjoy. Okay, now this kit was definitely supposed to come with some hose and T fittings and it didn't. So luckily I have clamps, luckily I have a bunch of T fittings and I have some hose. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna cut these just to see what diameter they are. Uh, what I have here might not actually work. So I at least wanna see what we're dealing with. All right, so I'm leaving this all loose. I'm gonna tighten it up, take it for a spin, and see what kind of see what kind of difference it made, and we'll adjust it while we're driving. I'll set you guys up so you can watch the boost pressure as well. Time to test the boost out. So the boost is still going up and creeping down. I'm gonna adjust that controller real quick. Adjust it again. I just noticed we have a hole in our line. I need to go back to the shop. Okay, so you guys know I keep the struggle in my videos. Uh, obviously, I found that the hose was leaking, and what I'm going to do is shorten it and hopefully fix that problem. I think it's leaking going to the controller, so we're just losing all uh, positive and negative pressure, so the valve isn't working properly. Uh, so I'm going to fix that and then we'll go back out for a road test. Sorry if it's windy out here, everybody, but I didn't want to bring the car into the garage. 
It's dark in there and I figure I can just get this done quick and get back on the road. Right there we had a split. Ooh, this engine's pretty hot. Let me get some gloves. Set up the way it needs to be. It's supposed to go in the wastegate and the boost pressure so it can read vacuum and boost. Or actually, I wonder what's more important, vacuum or boost. Maybe this is the wrong spot. So this is pretty interesting. I read how to do this stuff online and when I go do it to the car, it's never the same outcome as what you read online. And people complain that guys on YouTube who make videos don't make the right content because it doesn't have enough information. Yet, I make a video based on something I researched online and it seems like all the information isn't there either. So, I keep the struggle in. Now let's take a first spin again and hopefully I'm gonna see some steady boost pressure. If not, maybe I have a faulty N75 valve or maybe I have a faulty boost controller. I have no idea. Um, this was one that was supposedly for the car. It was supposed to come with everything needed. Maybe it was a return, I don't know. But let's take a first spin. Okay, I just got back to the shop. Um, when I read on installing the manual boost controller, I also read to run it in line with the N75 valve. I ran it in parallel, meaning they're both coming and going to the same point, but I think I need to run them in series. I'm gonna try and go from the manual boost controller to the N75 valve, then let that go down to the wastegate and see if that changes things. All right. <clears throat> Everything's nice and hot, so I could burn my hands now. So hopefully I could do this without uh, getting hurt. But here's what I'm going to do. I am simply going to remove everything. And then put the manual boost controller in line with the supply going to the N75 valve. Let's try this trick now. I'm a little concerned that this manual boost controller might have the wrong diameter pipe fittings on it as well. I bought it for a Jetta, but these look pretty tiny. That could be my problem as well. But again, this is just a test run. Hopefully this works. I'm gonna leave it right the way it is and we'll go back out for a drive. Hopefully I can get a reaction out of the car now. Back at the garage, this is my final attempt to make this manual boost controller work. I read online that you can bypass the N75 valve completely. My concern is that valve is actually no good. The car is tuned. I shouldn't be having this kind of a problem or at least adding the manual boost controller should fix it. So I'm going to bypass it completely, cap it off, go out with just the manual boost controller. If anyone does this from what I read online, it fixes it completely but it gives you a very twitchy throttle. I guess maybe the boost kicks in really fast. I have no idea why, but that's potentially what can happen and I'm curious to find out. So let's see what happens. Okay, I'm gonna simply try to just cap these lines so I don't have to cut any more openings into it.
Okay, time for the road test. All right, here we go. All right, last try. I did notice the boost was a little more consistent this time. This car's driving me crazy. All right, one more test. Okay, we're back at the shop. I took the car out for about 20 minutes and from what I can tell, running it with no N75 valve literally changed nothing. So does that mean the N75 valve is a problem? No. What it potentially means is possibly the wastegate is the problem or maybe the hose going to the wastegate is leaking. Maybe it's not big enough. There could be a couple things wrong with the car or the tune that's in the car might not be the right tune. This isn't my car and my friend picked up a pre-tuned computer. He didn't really know what was in it. So I might be chasing a ghost. What I'm gonna do is end this video at this point. If I figure out something else with the car, I'm gonna do another video on it. Or I might simply convince myself I'm chasing a ghost, but I like to figure out what's wrong. Another video I have coming up is going to be adding methanol. I noticed in the winter when I was driving the car, I had a very steady boost pressure. Now that it's really hot out, I noticed the boost has been fluctuating. It could just be temperature related. It could just be because it's hot. So we're gonna add methanol to the car too. I'm not trying to band-aid a problem. What I am trying to do is give them added security. But for right now, I'm gonna stop here, do a lot of research, see if I come up with another solution to this. Maybe, potentially the manual boost controller I put in could be the problem. I noticed the nipples that you actually put the hose on were really small. What's on the car is roughly a quarter inch and, and the inner diameter on those nipples are like smaller than an eighth of an inch. That might be the problem. So I'm going to do more research, maybe get a better manual boost controller, something that will work with the N75 valve, and then do another video installing that one as an upgrade because I'm definitely not happy with what's going on right now. So uh, thanks again, everybody. You know, I usually end these videos with the garage updates. Uh, you guys know the routine. I put out almost 20 of these videos, so I have a lot of projects, so stay tuned. I have some really cool stuff coming up, uh, and I'm trying not to repeat myself in my videos where I always talk about what I have coming up, because I do it in the beginning and the end of the videos, and I feel bad. I just want to focus on what I'm trying to fix. Uh, so thanks again, everybody. I really appreciate all the support. Please like and subscribe, and if you are a subscriber, thank you very much. I love talking to you guys, and I really appreciate you giving me feedback, and have a very nice day, everyone.